Super Green now. All right, so yeah. are, we, are we on? Yep, I think we're on again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Project Ion Podcast. This is number 2829. Uh, we had a little hiccup, so we... Maybe 31 by now. We're 31 by now. <laughs> well, actually, I'll be 30. Um, yeah. We had a little problem with our uh, with our Wi-Fi, so we went ahead and uh, reset that, restarted the uh, programs we're using, and now we are good to go. Yep. So we'll have a little lost episode where <laughs> Mr. Greenberg over here... Yeah, put... It. Bunch of disparaging marks about Prince. Prince, yeah. Put that on the Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Only those and then I defended Prince. Can access it. <laughs> and shut Kyle down. <laughs> well, let's get into the subject matter so we aren't wasting everybody's time. Mm-hmm. We all remember uh, Jesse Smollett, I yes. think. Right? Yes. We all try to forget Jesse Smollett. <laughs> so but the media's not letting us. Um. The Jesse Smollett case has taken yet another strange twist. So we got an article from the Chicago Tribune. Uh, the prosecution of Jesse Smollett, a small-time felony case that has grown only more bizarre, seemingly with each passing week, may have taken its strangest twist yet on Friday. Um, the Cook County judge ordered a special prosecutor to be appointed to reinvestigate the circumstances of the one-time Empire actor's alleged hoax attack the middle of the polar vortex. Allegedly. Yep. So The alleged polar vortex. <laughs> um, the judge here blasted uh, State Attorney Kim Fox on her handling of the prosecution, saying that the botched decision to appoint her top deputy to prosecute Smollett after recusing herself invalidated the case from start to finish. So, sounds like an investigation of the uh, prosecutor's office, too. Yeah. Kind a lot of, of shit hitting the fan there. Yeah. Mm. So we could see more charges raised, I suppose, potentially. Or the same one. Can they charge, like, can a different prosecutor charge the same thing? Yeah. So we're Adam and I were talking about this a little bit before the show, and there was no conviction. So I don't think we're in double jeopardy territory because he wasn't ever acquitted of something. Like, that's a. The, the thing was jeopardy. just kind of stalled, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, really... I, I think they either recommended charges be raised against him and they looked into it and decided to drop it or maybe they raised charges and then decided to drop it or something but uh, I couldn't give it to you book and verse but hmm. anyways yeah I just I, I don't like this punk <clears throat> you know the, the fact that he faked a hate crime and got all this media attention and wasted all of the police officers time and the public's time and the media's time and then he doesn't get he's not found guilty of anything he's mm-hmm. not charged of anything yep you know isn't i mean there's got to be some felonious i would act think there. so mhm yep i would think so and then i believe did the city of chicago sue him civilly for try to recoup some of their yeah uh, they argue they were damaged by you know all of the like what you're saying with the police expenditure and all the effort to mm-hmm. I mean, he wasn't even charged and found guilty of filing a false report. Yeah. It just, I mean, that it's mind boggling how this guy can just get off. And I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is about him. I mean, I'm afraid to say what I think it is. (laughs) Say it. (laughs) The fact that he's an actor. Oh, yeah, right. (laughs) Not where you thought (laughs) I was going. (laughs) No, no, I think we all know kind of, you know, in, in the day of the, you know, BLM movement and all that kind of stuff. We we don't know where the real line is because, you know, we may think it's in one place when it's entirely somewhere else. And, you know, maybe the police department was afraid of where the line was and they didn't want to stir the pot and mm. bring more negative attention on themselves. So they just said, eh, heck with it. What is BLM's end goal? Anybody know? Like, do they have a mission statement or are they just a slogan I think machine? I think they're more of a... I thought it was related to police brutality primarily, but I could be wrong. Well, I mean, I think that's how it started. Mm -hmm. Um, But I guess I liken BLM to more of a, um, uh, what were those clowns that sat in uh, the Wall Street? Occupy. Uh, Yeah, the Occupy movement. It's not real, no central figure, no central message. Their message is just everything. Mm. Yeah, I was just curious. I I think... uh, 
That's my understanding well, anyway, and I could be wrong. The fact that I answered the qu- or I asked the question and we couldn't answer it tells you enough right there. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. So, anywho. Well, yeah, and like so many things where there was so much activity online that is, so it's got its wagon tied to whatever the, your larger group might be. Yeah. I mean, when you don't maybe have a centralized uh, sort of group or persons or something kind of saying what the purpose is all the time, then I think you're subject to whatever the lowest common denominator is yeah. that somebody out there, you can find a tweet or something with a such and such a hashtag. Well, it's just like the stuff that you know happens what I mean? at the school here. Mm-hmm. One person shares an opinion that has some quote unquote evidence to it like um the was it the manual labor stuff and that's what everybody's image of esterville is is this concentration camp but well i thought elc was running a gulag out mm. there for summer school yeah yeah facts that's what it felt like stalin no, i never went to summer stalin school. era gulag right? yeah. Yeah. too smart for summer school yep. <laughs> bradley stalin <laughs> Bradamir Lenin. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but no, I I agree with your you know original point. You know when you when you don't have any kind of central message, all of a sudden your message is the message of everybody involved. Mm-hmm. Every you know millions of people, whatever their opinion is, that's the message that they're trying to project. Because right. they, I haven't heard. I mean, I know there are people that will stand up and say that they speak for the movement, but I don't know if they do or not because mm-hmm. we hear things in the news that um, contradict all that stuff left and right. Right. So. And I, I think that sort of thing doesn't help either because when – if it's increasingly wild rhetoric that is being put out there and people see it attached to whatever group that they may be – hashtagging for or something yeah you know if you're maybe somebody that would sort of disagree with it or maybe you're maybe an on the fence person or something you know now you're either more bitter or now you know maybe you're pushed to disagree with something where you maybe wouldn't have otherwise or if it was a little more yeah it's just like the democratic party i mean you got somebody as extreme as bernie sanders i consider myself center left on most issues and i don't want i like I'm not gonna probably not gonna vote Democrat this year unless it's somebody who's not as crazy as Bernie Sanders. That's the nominee. I mean, well, we have you know Bernie Sanders, who is a self-proclaimed socialist and <laughs> has. I, I mean, Jesus, you know, four years ago, the Democratic Party threw him under the bus in favor of Hillary. Yeah, I mean they they went out of their way to sabotage him um, for Hillary, which I mean is bad enough. But you know, you have Bernie as you know that a worked. popular man on the poll. You have. Um, Biden. Biden? Yep. Old man Sleepy Biden. Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. Well, scary Joe. I mean, the <laughs> oh, way that the please. way that he hugs and holds these. Oh please. Have you seen some of the? I mean, where women are visibly uncomfortable. Well, he's just an old dude. Well, he's an old dude. That's a problem. Can we really I think make that those? Come back to Biden. You know, Gerald Greenberg. It's excuse, <laughs> who's that? It's excuses like those that cheapen the Me Too movement. Yeah, grab them by the you know what. Oh, wait, that's our president. People seem to forget that he said that, but we're worried about Sleepy Joe grabbing some shoulders. Ah, whatever. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm not I'm I'm not but a he's crass a businessman. I'm not a crass person. I I don't appreciate, you know, crass commentary, but even I think that's just fucking locker room talk between two guys. Okay. I mean I'm I'm not mm-hmm. gonna I'm not gonna defend the statement. I'm not gonna you know, say that what he said was right. I don't think it was, but I think we're taking something that a hell of a lot worse has been said in private quarters by, you know, people on TV and in the media. And we're just, I mean, we're, we're taking this and putting it into a context that we want to and not seeing it for what it is. Well, I think a heck of a lot worse has been done to women than what Joe Biden has done. No, I don't <laughs> disagree with that at all. I, you know, I don't. What my, my point more or less was, is I think that will, his interactions with these women, I think, will be detrimental to his campaign. Yeah. I'm not saying I think he's an old pervert. I'm saying that I think that the you know Fox News is going to start showing these clips ad nauseum of of Joe Biden 
Creepy Joe. Creepy Joe feeling up little girls. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. I mean, you know, and, and the guy probably is just trying to project uh, a family man image. I mean, that's mm-hmm. just kind of who he is. Um, I That's what I believe anyway. But, you know, what you believe in, in the way that things are seen are very two different. I think Ilhan Omar should get in the race. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of saying stuff that uh, gets you in trouble down the road, yeah. you guys have heard of the uh, um, Kyle Kashiv, I think I'm saying his last name correctly, story where he was pulled, uh, his, Harvard rescinded their acceptance of him. I'm familiar with the basic facts there? Yeah. Okay, well, we got a Trevor Noah video on. <laughs> Now he took over John Stewart. Is that right? That's right. right. Yep. Hopefully we don't have an ad here. Apocalypse. Mm, internet today. I've been starting to notice that YouTube's giving me two ads in a row. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they're going to start being I've like been seeing that freaking too. network TV pretty soon. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's wild. Play the video, please. College admissions. That special time in a teenager's life when they ask institutions of higher learning to saddle them with soul-crushing debt. Now, the issue of who does or does not get into prestigious universities has been in the news more than usual lately, mostly thanks to the third most popular actress on the Hallmark Channel. And now... (laughs) And now there's another college admissions scandal making headlines, and this one makes even Aunt Becky look good. A fierce debate is raging now about whether Harvard University made the right decision by rescinding its acceptance of a Parkland shooting survivor turned Mm -hmm. gun rights advocate. Kyle Kashuv says that the university pulled his admission after texts and documents surfaced showing that he had used racist and sexist language on social media two years ago. Okay. There's a lot going on. So what do you guys think about it so far? So far... um... If the reason that they're pulling his admission is because he is showing to be or shown to be sexist and racist, I mean that's that's different. Well, shoot, no one's going to be allowed into college. If everybody looked at back, back at stuff everybody said two, three, four years ago, yeah, well, Jim, think about how big idiots we were ten years ago. Right. <laughs> I mean, we shouldn't even be allowed in Astor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. That's probably maybe even understating <laughs> where we shouldn't be allowed. Um, but, yeah, and I agree with your point in theory, Adam, but, like, it seems like the distinction is made by who this kid is, and that's where, yeah. you know, it's without his fame for being the one kid from the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School Parkland, Florida yeah. school shooting that didn't come out and get in the um, CNN town hall thing, you know, for uh, more gun control, et cetera. And he was he took the opposite position and got sort of famous in his own way. Um, it sort of maybe it circumstantially stinks of well, here's Harvard's opportunity of mm-hmm. taking out a social justice. Uh, it, well. Yeah, exactly. Virtue. Taking out somebody that's a conservative from their uh, by rescinding his application, but I don't know. So I mean, if 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 they were having to go out on a, I mean, they you know it could be argued they are going he they are going out on a limb to find a reason to not admit him because he's you know a vocal conservative. Um, I mean, that's initially what I thought when you told me who he was and that they rescinded his. Admission, but when when we started discussing that, well, you know, there's evidence that you know he, you know, has racist, sexist feelings and ideals. I mean, that kind of changes the picture for me a bit. Yeah, I I uh, I understand Harvard's right to do that. I mean, mm-hmm. they're a private institution; <laughs> they should be able to let whoever they want in. But um, to think that they're doing it out of their own conscious good conscious is asinine i mean they're totally doing it for a 
political stunt and um, altering who they or, or what they see as their institution. You know, the typical. Yep. Um, well, safe zones. I guess. Yeah. Well, if they did this sort of deep dive for everybody, where if for any student that applied, because what I'm guessing happened here is because this uh, kid is who he is, somebody furnished him with the information and said, mm-hmm. hey, check this out, that here's what he said two years ago. Yeah. Wink, wink, nod, nod, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, if they're, if, if they're going to extraneous lengths above and beyond what they would do for any normal applicant, then yeah, that does cross a different line for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if, and if they found this stuff as a result of that deep dive, because this was a kid that they didn't like and wanted to find a reason, then, then yeah, I do take issue with that. Cause I mean, let's face it, a degree from an Ivy league school matters quite a bit. Yeah. I oh mean, yeah. I mean, it's the, the name on the name on the paper is everything. Yeah. And I mean, that would, ex- a, a degree for this kid would ex- probably give him an opportunity to make a lot more money and you know he'd be in certain circles and so on and so forth it would probably pay dividends for him for the rest of his life and yeah. um you know there's a certainly a tangible value to that so i can see where the kid is pissed well let's continue to hear from mr trevor noah on the matter What's going on in the story we've got a parkland shooting survivor who is a pro-gun advocate fighting about college admissions and racism. Basically, every hot button issue is crammed into one story. All that's missing is abortion, and then you get bingo. Done. (laughs) So Kyle Kashuv, he had a bunch of private messages where he said racist and sexist things, and because of that, he got kicked out of Harvard. The good news is he just got offered a full scholarship to Trump University. Now, (laughs) you might be wondering how bad were these messages that they got him kicked out of Harvard. Well... Do you guys? I mean, this is off kilter, sort of. But do you guys think Trevor Noah's funny? No, I think he's a jackass. I mean, when he does stand up, I like him. I don't like this show because of that. I mean, that's a cheap shot at the president when the president wasn't involved, had nothing to do with it. <laughs> but they got got to get a dig in if yeah. possible. Well, they right? do, and that's the only reason he's popular is because that's all he does. I mean, his ratings. I would imagine his ratings probably dip unless he's ratings are on the terrible. President. <laughs> yeah, I don't watch enough of him to have an opinion. I, well, it's because you can't watch is. him for yeah. more than three or four minutes right. before he's either bashing every Republican on the planet or Trump. Which yeah. I mean, he's doing the same thing when he does that. So yeah, I don't watch any late night yeah not comedy anymore. anymore. I mean, it used to be great. Mm-hmm. I loved Conan. I thought John Stewart was funny a long time ago. Yeah, and you know, I think. It, the word got out that a lot of young people watched John Stewart and actually took their news in that way. Yeah. And now they've tried to remake your every late night show to be sort of well, a political angle, like uh, the Daily Show used yeah, to be. Yeah, and they're they're trying to kind of be edgy, like Bill Maher. Mm-hmm. And I like Bill Maher just because he's he's like a classic liberal. He's not. Yeah. He's not. Uh, he's not social. fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. he's more yeah. palatable. He's not crazy, sure. yeah. and he calls out people who are all the time. Right. So even if they're on the same side, but uh, this is just cheap and baiting. I think, uh, it, like so many other, like every late night TV show host right now, yeah. and every comedian mm-hmm. and every actor when they get another minute in the spotlight. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, good grief! Well, this bad. Some of his text messages included racist and anti-Semitic language. He used the N-word repeatedly, including about black student athletes. In one thread, he used the N-word 11 times, joking Pause that he was there. good at typing. Okay, what, let's see if we can make this out. Jack. I don't bleep. Bleep. My, my bleep now. No. No. So, <laughs> bleep where you are. Get in the bleeping moped and drive. You know, and 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 like really good at typing in. Okay, practice uh, makes perfect. I don't even know what that means. Well, I heard that the kid in sort of an explanation for this was that he was in like a gamer chat room or something, going back and forth with with his buddies and. Sort of oh my God! The the tone was trying to one up each other with who could say more increasingly yeah. outrageous stuff. And 
if they're going to merit who gets into college off like an Xbox or Twitch chat, then geez Louise, no one's no going to be educated. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> so how come, and this is Fox News, how come Fox News isn't bringing everything into context? I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't agree with it, even if it's in the right context, but I'm saying why don't they add that context to it instead of just saying, you know, this is what he regularly says to his mm-hmm. friends. Yeah, that's good and point. that was really just pointing out the the way that the media is covering it, not mm-hmm. really the issue itself. Right. What's well, a scandalous story, that's for sure. <laughs> it because, quote, practice makes perfect. Holy shit. Ooh. Are you seeing that? Yeah. I've never seen the N-word written that many times sure you have. in the same sentence. Even rappers would be like, yo, that's too much, dog. <laughs> you got to throw in some other lyrics, man. Libra, zebra, shit like that. I mean, look at that message. Forget Harvard. It looks like he's plagiarizing one of Quentin Tarantino's scripts. What is that? <laughs> and because of Kyle's profile, this story has gotten a lot of attention in the news, <laughs> right? And he's come out. He's come out saying, although these messages are extremely offensive in his defense, that was actually the whole point. Kyle Kashub says he and some others were trying to be as extreme and shocking as possible when he used the N-word repeatedly. The person who wrote those things is not who I am today. Well, at that time, it was really um, a friend group where who could say the most shocking thing and most extreme thing uh, for the sake of shock value. So he was competing with friends for shock value. I guess he won. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's always funny to me that people who purposefully go for shock value and shock effect are always surprised when their shock gets effects. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I can't believe this happened, but isn't that what you were trying to do? It's like prank calling 911 and then freaking out when the cops show up. I was just joking. No, I don't think you guys... No, it's not the same thing. Yeah, that's a Th- major that's, yeah. false equivalency. Hmm. And I, I'm know, not defending the kid. I'm just saying that the you can't equate the two. Well, the the surprise over shock value thing, I mean, to his point, or Trevor, Trevor Noah, Noah's point, excuse me, is like talking about a universe where there's no such thing as hyperbole yeah you know or where you, you can't say something that's so outrageous that it is taken you should take it as a joke on its face just because it's so outrageous mm-hmm. um yeah but i think the the point that the media is trying to get to is you know instead of saying something about raping babies which i think would be more shocking um this kid went that route mm-hmm I yeah, like I said, I mean he's what probably sixteen at the time. Yeah, he's eighteen now maybe. Um, if you, as I mentioned earlier, if you have never seen an Xbox or Twitch chat um, with a group of friends, then you're in for a surprise because mm-hmm. there's a lot worse said than that. <laughs> oh yeah, that, I mean that's true. Who hasn't said crazy stuff when yeah. they're sixteen? Wowzers would actually come. It's a white neighborhood. We always come. <laughs> now, some God. people have come to Kyle's defense saying that it's not fair for the college admissions office to judge him for stuff that he did when he was 16. But that's exactly what college admissions does. Oh, that's true. <laughs> they judge you for what you did in high school. Think about it. I mean, if they're turning down someone for failing pottery class when they were 14, you're definitely not getting in after you've been busted for saying the N-word 11 times. Everyone knows the limit is nine. <laughs> and I understand where Harvard is coming from. There's usually no way to know which one of your prospective students are racist. But if you somehow do know, then why would you admit that kid into your school? Like, a lot of people have herpes. But if someone is listing that in their Tinder profile, <laughs> what are you supposed to do? <laughs> no, it's like, uh, thank you, herpes man. <laughs> Swipe left! Swipe left! Now, Kashub, for his part, did apologize for what he had written in those messages, right? He said that he's grown since then, and he wishes that he could take it back. But at the same time, he's also pointing fingers. For people who don't know, Harvard was founded in 1636 uh, by slave owners. It has a long history of racism, sexism, misogyny. Uh, but I think that people can grow and people can change. Right. And, and I, don't, I don't hold that s- standard to Harvard, and I think that people can make mistakes, and I don't think that mistakes make you irredeemable, as Harvard showed for me, as Fair Harvard point. Uh, established can I st- for me. Can I give you a time out there? So you're sure. mentioning that they had slave owners in the 1600s. Mm-hmm. You using the N-word was, what, a year, year and a half ago? Do you Two see years it? ago. Two years ago. A little more recent. Okay. 
<laughs> that was funny. I'm surprised that Fox News is one to call him out on that. Yeah, that, that yeah. is funny. I don't know. I what was the kid trying to say? Like, was his point though that you can grow and change over time? Though, I mean, I, is it more? Is it about the day? Yeah, he was just being a dumb, immature, sixteen year old. So, <laughs> if I'm Harvard, I'm you know looking at this you know application of this kid who looks really great, and then all of a sudden I see you know this kind of language in you know a chat session, whatever. It's not necessarily that it happened it was well, I mean the, you know the issue was that it happened but I, I think it brings into question you know how does this kid really feel behind closed doors if he's willing to you know use that word so freely even in a chat with his friends mm-hmm. so I mean I, I don't think it's maybe the instance itself but the, the questions that that instance brings um, to the table in regards to this kid's character yeah, I totally um, agree with Harvard's approach, though. Like, they should have the ability to, to let in who they want and not, you know, let in who they don't want. But to me, it's kind of just like I said earlier, it's just um, political at this point. I mean, suspicious it's circumstances. Just, yeah. Right? It's, it's 2019. I mean, I, don't know, I guess the more that I think about it, the more I, I don't think it's political. Um, I, I, the more that I kind of reason it out in my head, the more that I think, you know, if I was in Harvard's position, you know, you know, some kid that has, you know, garners media attention and, you know, if he, it looks like he could have these tendencies, even though, you know, these, this conversation was taken, you know, out of context when it was put in the news, the fact that he went there, the fact that he used those words brings into question the content of this kid's real character. But have you ever said something that was <laughs> maybe, um, risque oh shit at, yes okay so all the time are you a racist no there you go <laughs> i mean well i'm not i'm not trying to make it that simple for this kid well, no, but, but we all say stuff that's stupid with our friends well, yeah but unless you unless you sit down and you take the time to get to know me and know what my you know real personality is like you don't have a context to put anything and maybe in. that's what admissions should do at harvard <laughs> sit down and develop a relationship with these you know kids over the course of you know months or years well if you're going to let them into the most prestigious school in the united states if not the world i mean i think you sh- well, should be my meti- meticulous it's prestige about you... name only anymore but um yeah so some of what you're saying there adam made me think of something is there sort of a PR angle from Harvard's standpoint? So say they, you know, i speculating here, but I feel like because of this kid being who he was, somebody furnished him with this information. I, I don't really feel like Harvard probably went out and dug it up so proactively. I, I think that our university system right now is a PR angle. The whole damn thing. You take a look at every school in the United States with a football team and the lengths that they won't go to, go to and the amounts of money that they will pay at students' detriment to hire football coaches so their you know, program is you know, prestigious. Um, you know, the, the way that they take applicants, the way that they – Well, and then think about know, the attempts to cover up scandals to too. I mean right. – like the, the look at Michigan State. Yeah, Holy shit! The extremes these uh, administrators go to mm-hmm. cover up things and and scandals inside I, their universities is insane. I think that the the stuff that happened at Michigan State was every bit as bad, or well, yeah, every bit as bad that, as what had happened at Penn State, and they didn't get anywhere near the fines because well, it was women's gymnastics. And that guy got did he get life? That tra- or the the doctor? I can't remember. I thought he got something like hmm. crazy long, which yeah. he should. But uh, well, so. Yeah, so like what I was thinking was, okay, Harvard has this, get this windfall of this, you know, salacious information about this kid. On its face, it looks like he may or have racist tendencies, et cetera, et cetera. If they do nothing, now they could be later put on blast for letting this for kid letting in, him yeah. in. And so, well, look at Harvard; they're letting in, you know, junior grand wizard to the clan. <laughs> yep. to, go study yeah. at their university so i wonder if that maybe that played a factor too but you know what the funny thing is um they they prevent people like that from getting into these schools but you know some kid that comes out of the middle east that has anti-american tendencies will come over here he'll get educated at harvard or yale or something like that and then he'll go back to you know fight the good fight against the u.s mm-hmm. 
I don't know. I just it popped into my head as we were kind of talking about that. Right. It's, it's a weird, you know, if they're if they're investigating, you know, kids f- from the U.S. that much, are they investigating these other people too? Interesting. Sorry, my brain just kind of took a real hard detour on that. <laughs> Well, we can keep this theme going of inequity in the sports universe. Hmm. So this next video is a Young Turks video. Gank. And, uh, yeah, it's Beta Man. brought to you by Gank and Company. Beta. And uh, it's called uh, Kaepernick Exposes Hypocrisy of the Richie Incognito. Son. Richie Incognito is oh, my favorite yeah. football He's player. He's awesome. He's with the Raiders now, I think. <laughs> yep. I believe. Perfect. We'll learn all about it. quarterback refusing to stand for the national anthem. So, f- so we all know Colin Kaepernick yeah. started. Hero, right? With the, uh, everybody's hero. Um, kneeling. And I, I think he said it was related to his feelings about police brutality and uh i think it caught fire in the nfl to a degree and there were more and more people that were kneeling for the national anthem and basically you know i think that it got to a point where the fans were objecting to it to such a large degree that the league kind of put a clamp on it in one way or Finally another Finally figured it out is that uh, is that a fair summary of? Yeah, but I was thinking earlier I could compare mm-hmm. Prince to Colin Kaepernick. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> they both suck just as much. <laughs> Spurge. Yeah, it's that's too dumb of a comment to warrant. Tonight response. we're gonna party like it's night. Four games. No. Start the video. Not getting paid leave for killing people. That's not right. Part of Get what makes this country special. We respect people's rights to have a different opinion. So don't ask if your dreams are crazy. Ask if they're crazy enough. Former San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick protested this. Not guilty in the shooting death of an unarmed black man. <laughs> Fatally shot an unarmed black driver during a traffic stop. He saw the stats. Among young black men aged uh, ages 15 to 19, mm, they were stop. Shot by pol- That's not true. Um, 31.17 per million, 1.47 per million. That's um, so. The, okay, okay. That, that, that's a misleading statistic because we don't have. There's a lot more millions of I yeah mean, white people yeah, than there are white people. people in, yeah. So, yeah, per million, it would look bad. Yeah, that's like, well, I... <laughs> that's a really, that, really shitty way to present those figures, because that, that's incredibly misleading. Huh. I, let's let's look at the actual... ProPublica is the source. Give me a second here, because I'm going to figure out the real statistic on that. Pro. Because with the math, as long as we know what the... Okay, so... Uh, because, yeah, there's, what, like 350 million something odd people yeah. in the united states of that 350 million what's a percentage of white people like 60 maybe yeah. so yeah. you know okay. half plus a little more of 350 i don't know what are we talking so. about 17 8 so like 180 million people ish yeah. that are white but then the black community is only what like 10 percent or maybe. something so yeah, the the per million statistics would be way off. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> While Adam's looking up the statistics here, I was watching a uh, video on uh, the BBC earlier. I think it was with Piers Morgan, actually. And they were talking about the issue. And I don't know why my mind went to this, but we were talking about statistics. And uh, they were talking about the issue of transgender's competing like uh there oh it was recently in connecticut that's where i'm going with this there is something in connecticut where these transgender women so actually men competed in the state um, girls track me and they just kicked everybody's ass Mm. and all these parents started flipping out they're like these are dudes racing against my 15 16 17 year old and they're Mm -hmm. winning by like 10 seconds (laughs) how is this fair and I think there's a law in Connecticut, and I could be wrong right now. Um, I, I get I 
just got sidetracked. But I think, God, how did that, how did they say that? Oh, I know in professionally you have to be taking so much estrogen for so many amount of, of months to be mm-hmm. able to compete. But in Connecticut, they just passed something. I don't want to say it because I don't want to be wrong. Sure. But I just thought it was interesting um, how dumb it would be to uh, say that this is actually equality. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just insane. Yeah, that that's a whole... I know it's a different conversation. Interesting but. <laughs> discussion. Yeah, well, there's so many factors there with the differences, um, you know, between a biological male, biological female in terms of testosterone in the yeah. bloodstream and then, like, how that affects your bone density and all that other stuff and then like the additional wrinkles of okay now we've had a biological woman that's been taking testosterone for x period and you know if it's been one year versus 10 etc so on and so forth and then even a man a biological man that takes estrogen for a period of time who had reached physical maturity as a man previously has got a, n- another different set of it's, factors to take into consideration. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, and it's so complicated, I think, that without an additional arena for competition that's just allotted for transgender that's people. That's what the solution was trying to be or right. was they are getting to. Without that, I think it's going to just ruin women's I, sports. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't see... It's like... What if well, there was a, some guy, a tennis expert, threw this out, and I thought it was interesting because it's tennis, but they said, like, the top, what was it, almost, oh, man, top 500 or something male tennis players in the world would all beat Serena Williams. Right, <laughs> who's, like, kind of the undisputed goat in yeah. women's tennis. Of all yeah. time, right. you know. Yeah. So to say that there's not a, phys- uh, a physical difference between – Right, men and women athletically mm-hmm. is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy talk. But then you're looking at like your solution in all transgender competition. That's great, but you uh, like what percentage of the population is actually transgender? Mm-hmm. That statistic is being thrown around a lot, and it's not right. near as high as CNN or MSNBC would right. lead you to believe. But um, uh, yeah, anyway, I just thought that was interesting. It was everybody wants to be fair and balanced and equal and all that stuff. But there are, I mean, there's some stuff that just isn't equal Well, and, and that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's a point with the, like, you know, the, okay, when you come along and you discover a discrepancy and then you immediately chalk it up to being some sort of an ism. Yeah. You know, isms is a, don't this exist. This is a racism. This is a sexism, you know, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. There's a point when it starts to make, zero sense anymore yeah and um you know because like you say it's the world is not equal right i mean there's and a it reason, shouldn't be <laughs> there's a reason i don't play nba basketball yep. and it's because well there's numerous reasons i suppose but uh there's a know, reason i don't give birth right because i'm a man <laughs> Pre- you know my jump shot is a little <laughs> on the weak order. Yeah, you've been but run- for that, you know, yeah. man, I'd be balling for you, sure. You've been running too many hundred Ks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Probably outrun anybody in the league, but yeah, right. I wish, <laughs> but uh, fuck, I'm doing this wrong. That's okay. We can keep it. Yeah, keep it rolling. We, we got sidetracked. <laughs> yeah, we Police always, at a rate always do. Twenty-one times higher than whites. The same age. And used his voice to spark a change. No, it was something that was really just a personal decision. Now, I, hmm. I don't know Colin Kaepernick's background very well, but wasn't he, like, adopted into a white family and, like, yep. grew up in the suburbs somewhere yep. or something? He was a rich kid, rich white kid. Well, rich white family kid, I should yep. say. Yeah. Yep. Or was he adopted or did he have a mixed parents I, or something? I know or? he was. He grew up in the burbs. He okay. was not you know, a, a gang banger in the streets of Harlem or whatever, right. as he might portray. <laughs> Went to Nevada. No, I didn't agree with what was going on. The National Football League, however, did not concur. Take this man, for example. Raiders signed, I kid you not, controversial guard Richie Incognito to a one-year deal. So 
can you give us some background on why Richie Incognito is a controversial <laughs> so, person for those that maybe don't know? Yeah, so um, I I grew up playing football all my life, and Richie, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a unique bond between linemen, people who are in the trenches, you know, just getting beat to crap every single play, and you gotta be, you know, you gotta. If you're going to be a lime, especially in the NFL, you have to be able to take some crap. And this one beta male <laughs> lineman, I think uh, it was with the. <laughs> with the Dolphins, I believe, is when they. Yeah, that's when, when this all went down. Incognito was playing for Miami. Yeah, and this beta male lineman complained or, or whined to their coach about Richie bullying him. And these are grown men. I mean, these are 28, 29, 30. Lyman can be a little older and still play in the league. Mm -hmm. um, upper 30s uh, men. And in a universe of high testosterone. High testosterone. Of, these guys are 350, right. almost 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. And Richie gets thrown under the bus for bullying somebody. You're in the league. You're a lineman your entire life. I mean, take care of it. Yeah. If, you, if somebody's doing that to you and you don't like it, take care of it. And there's a way to take care of it between men, especially linemen in the league, that I think we all know what we're talking about. Right. Yeah, because it, it wasn't like – I mean, and it's not to say that Richie Incognito isn't a huge douchebag. Oh, he is. In yeah, his he, person. I mean, yeah. he – Almost certainly, but he shouldn't be ostracized out of a job or out of the league for that. For words, for words, yeah, yeah. that might have been mean. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there was all this hubbub, and I I think it was racial slurs and epithets because yeah. the other guy was black. Yeah, as, as I recall, I can't remember the player's name, but yeah, um, well, we don't you know, anymore, right. and that's probably real. and uh, but I don't know. Richie has bounced around. I think freaking good lineman too. Yeah. <laughs> Now he is being signed by what the Raiders? Raiders. He said. Teats will be happy. Yeah. The Oakland Raiders have signed Richie Incognito. Here's what he did. And where did he, he played in Nebraska? Didn't he? Uh, yep. Okay. Yep, I believe so. Just a hint. He didn't protest peacefully. He smashed up his own Ferrari with a baseball bat. <laughs> he threw a dumbbell at a fellow gym goer. Where quote the alleged victim says oh, Incognito that. was rambling about the government. <laughs> rambling about the government and screaming at the man to get off my fucking playground oh, demonetized and screaming at the man to quote get off my effing playground at the gym incognito repeatedly said there's a guy walking around with headphones on i'm running nsa class level three documents through my phone i can't have anybody in bluetooth capability of me or taking pictures of me police investigations revealed that incognito was suffering an altered paranoid state and how scary is that though a great oh, big huge strong guy on a high protein diet that like thinks the government's after him and yep. stuff oh he's i think he's like six six three seventy yeah. or something like that. He's a big boy. That's, I, we can say that for sure. Yeah, that's crazy. And believe ordinary citizens were government officials that were tracking him and recording him. When his father <laughs> passed, Incognito went to the funeral home and said he wanted his father's head cut off for research purposes, <laughs> and that he walked through the funeral home punching caskets and throwing things. <laughs> and yet caskets. there was more. At the home, Bullshit. Incognito at one point made a gun gesture toward one of the employees. He also said he had guns in his truck, which proved to be true after police located and impounded weapons in his vehicle. After obtaining a search warrant, police recovered a tan Glock 17 9mm handgun, a black Glock. I wonder if any of that was an illegal gun carry, though. Yeah. We don't know the facts. Yep. Because it sounds like they had to get a search warrant. Yep. Well, he would have been charged if it was, I'm sure. And, 35. like, this has nothing to do with football because yeah. he's getting paid to smash people in football. Not, And that's all he's getting paid for. Well, what the Young Turks are doing was, you know, they showed Colin Kaepernick yeah. is sort of this um stand-up model well as a, a you know, like a righteous figure that's yeah. you know doing the good works or whatever and they paint incognito here to be a like a crazy person 
Which, you know, probably maybe, is. I mean, it sounds like he has. Maybe he is. Yeah. CTE, a little bit. Could be. Right. Huh. Yeah. But, you know, does the fact that Kaepernick doesn't have a job in yeah, incognito is crazy and has a job, I mean, can we really compare the two? Yeah. Five forty caliber handgun, three rifles, and four magazines from Incognito's Ford Raptor. He was accused of racism during a game against the Jacksonville Jaguars and uh, Jaguars and Yannick Ngakwe, where Ngakwe tweeted, "Great win today," and sixty-four as in Incognito's number. You're gonna have to come harder than some weak racist slurs. I'm proud of my African heritage, as are seventy percent of the other black players mm -hmm. in this league. Incognito would later apologize to Yannick and Gakwe. In Miami, it would get worse. Uh, Jonathan Martin quit the oh, team and Jonathan debated. Martin, yeah. That's yeah, his name. Okay. Feeling such psychological distress. And get out of the league. And giving man. up on his career, feeling such. Uh, psychological duress that he said he twice considered committing suicide because of the harassment via, as CBS Sports reported, the ringleader, Richie Incognito. In text messages sent by Richie Incognito to Jonathan Martin on January 6, 2013, he insulted Martin with homophobic language. Incognito also referred to Martin's sister in sexually graphic terms. Block his his number. woes date. He sounds like an all asshole. He is, big time. But block his number, move on. I mean, there's ways to handle it instead of mm -hmm. crying to the public, I guess. Well, maybe he. Maybe when he brought it up to the team, they didn't hear him or didn't listen or blew him off. And so he said, fuck you, then I'll go to the press. Mm, yeah, I guess we don't have the facts. Nope. We're factsless. Let's jump ahead here a little bit. I'm sick of this guy <laughs> rambling on about incognito. Headbutted <laughs> opponents twice in one half and screamed <laughs> at his still head going. coach on the sidelines in 2009. But thank goodness he just didn't do this. He kneels for what he believes in. William Faulkner would say, never be afraid huh. to raise your voice for honesty uh -huh. and truth and compassion against injustice. Yeah. 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 Adam, let me ask you, do you feel like this is an apples to apples comparison? I mean, for the purposes that they're laying this out no, for? No, I, I, I don't. I, well, it's not apples to apples. I think that, you know, it sounds like he's just an asshole incognito is. And, you know, I would liken him to somebody like an Adam Kinsu who's just oh, yeah, he's nasty yeah, and nasty. But that's what you, I mean, that's how you get to the league. That's how you get paid. You have mm -hmm. to be that nasty. I mean, you can't be a, a powder puff snowflake and play professional football. Well, now you can, you can be tough and physical and not be a butthole. Yeah, I get that. And maybe Richie was a little bit more of a butthole than others, but we uh, you can't so get that weak sauce out of here. Let me say, I, I, <laughs> I, I disagree with Colin Kaepernick. I don't like him. Um, I personally kind of think he's douchey, but I don't think that there was any reason for them to not let him play football. Maybe because he's not a good quarterback. Well, I mean, well, yeah, that's the factor that's, that we haven't talked about. Yeah. Yet. I mean, is he regardless of, enough? regardless of quality of quarterback that was not a reason for him to no longer be working in the nfl i i think if that were the case that would be bullshit if it's his stats then that's different um but this guy i you know each team has to determine what kind of behavior they're willing to accept um the oh the owner of the cowboys um uh, oh don't oh crap the name's gonna it's name? right on the tip of my brain uh anyway so you know he if he has a player gary jones yep. yeah gary there jones um if he is and he is said on on tv you know hey i'm willing to overlook behavior if you're performing on the field you know i'm willing to overlook this or willing to overlook that if you're if you're performing now you know was kaepernick um you know good enough well, for them to ignore that kind of stuff was incognito good enough for them to ignore that kind of stuff maybe he is maybe he's not i mean he looks like an asshole that i wouldn't want to have on my team and the league has rules i mean look at um ray rice who beat his girlfriend he's out of the league the, the league has rules against you know what is and isn't acceptable as a player representing the nfl and if incognito's in the nfl he obviously hasn't violated some of those um NFL mandated rules. So. Well, and I will say that the difference here is, you know, Kaepernick seemed to be kind of giving the finger to, you know, the flag, the country, and you know, the the league in general when he continued to refuse to stand for the, well, the anthem. Yeah, I mean, look so I mean, he's he was directly, you know, opposing the, 
you know, the NFL, whereas incognito, just pissing off the people around him. And you got to look at who watches the NFL, mm-hmm. too. I mean, what's their what's their clientele? It's <laughs> white, middle-aged men. Right. Um, oh, I don't know if you can, you know, a lot of, well, I know a lot more rabid fans from other, you know, races than white men. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it would be fair to say, probably as a generality, that the NFL demographic is probably more of a blue collar one than the college football demographic. Yeah, uh, yeah I would probably say um, that could just be just in a real tip, maybe paint with a pretty broad brush there. And I suppose the reason for that is just the you know college football fans, I think, have a, maybe a tendency to have been people who went to that went college, to school, yeah. right? So uh, then, how do you explain most Hawkeye fans? Oh, <laughs> bird. <laughs> or Notre Dame. That drives me nuts, too. Oh, yeah. 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 So that's a Catholic thing. Yeah. But yeah, so if it is a c- kind of a blue collar demographic that's watching the games, I mean, you could associate, you know, God, guns, and country and that kind of thing, maybe to a larger degree than you might with others. But. Yeah, I mean, I think your point is a good one, Kyle, that there's the league took a look at the bad PR from the kneeling thing and felt like they had to make a business decision Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, probably to, um, you know, cut that, cut that out. And I don't know if they've made everybody stop or if they are just not bringing the players out on the field for the national anthem. Yeah, I think that's the thing, like. I haven't been to a pro game in a long time, but I know the uh, the hubbub, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago, with some of the managers of the team said, if you're going to kneel, that's that's fine, but don't even come out for the anthem. Just stay in the mm-hmm. stay in the, the hallway. And I tell you what, if I was getting paid a oh, hundred and some million from my employer, I'd probably do what he suggested. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> but, you know. And I think the NBA had a rule, or maybe has a rule, that requires players to come out and stand for. Oh, really? Yeah, and I think they had that actually in place before any of the yeah the kneeling thing happened. Because have we seen this kneeling thing in sports other than football? They started doing it. Um, God, there was actually a lot of women's sports that were doing it. Uh, I don't know if it was WNBA or whatever, but. Um, NFL, I think, was what trademarked it, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. like the first thing. But, um, and I think the NFL has the biggest audience too. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, the Twins play 160 games a year or whatever. If somebody kneels for their 85th game, it's not gonna. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I know it started with the NFL. Right. Yeah. Fewer games. Yeah. Well, the NFL owns. TV on Sundays. Yeah. I mean, there's, you can hardly turn TV on without an NFL game. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a big part of it. Well, should we shift gears to something sure. a little more? I got about yeah. ten minutes. To lighthearted. Think. Well, you got Bad just night. enough time to get through this video, then, sir. My twenty-six. Uh, the name this of this video is, is "My Twenty-Six-Year-Old Model Girlfriend Is Out of My League." I love twenty-six-year-old model Sarah. She fell in love with Mason, a 54. 54- God, <laughs> let me back that up a little. It's Bruce Valanche. It is Bruce Valanche. <laughs> Mason, a 54. 54- <laughs> How much money does this cat have? I don't know. Let me pa- I want to pause it. Ma- there he there is. There he is. Ah! Bruce Valanche. Great head of hair. Yeah, yeah, nice. If, I mean, assuming it is. Natural, and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, probably is. He's got something going for him. Yeah. Holy Toledo. Wow. Mason, a 54-year-old retired child star turned <laughs> entrepreneur. I don't He's see myself five as being in her league. <laughs> Bro, you're not even, like, approaching what would be close to her. Oh, oh man. <laughs> He's not even the same universe. No. Well, okay. You know, she's like... An Astroville nine, but would be like an LA four. I mean, she, yeah, she's she's not that pretty. She's a ten, man. 
Yeah, she's an Estherville agent? 11. <laughs> yeah, she's okay, Estherville Okay, 11. fine. Adjust the numbers a little bit, but she wouldn't be... No, she's not a she's not a ten. Oh, she's not not in a she's like, a high. What I'm saying, yeah, not in a big maybe a city. high eight. Oh man, whatever. High seven. Whatever. Go. The couple have been happily together for the last seven months. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, we're gonna take the bike Where out for a spin. This <laughs> I'm the cringe lord. Oh my lord! <laughs> God help us all. <laughs> We're gonna take the wheels. How humiliating! Out. Have to get out on your hover round and it's like, oh all right. man, night out so on he's, town. So he's a former child star. Yeah, his name is Reese something, Mason Reese, I hmm. think. So does that mean he has money? I guess I, we'll find out. Yeah, I mean enough to have an apartment in New York City. So. But they have faced plenty of criticism along God. the way. A lot of people have come out and you know like, really. You're with that dude? Like, why? Now it's getting serious. A legitimate question. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I just can't understand. Why, well, what's wrong maybe with there you? just aren't that many nice guys in New York City. Yeah. Yes. Will their nearest and dearest accept their love? What I hope Mason is like? I'm kind of expecting maybe like a character, you know? Hey, how are you? Oh my God. <laughs> Don't uh, quit judging over there, yeah. Greenberg. Yeah. I know you're judging. I am. That's all I do. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm 26 oh, years that's old. That's a four? An LA four? That's an LA. Still. Okay. It, oh, fine. Adjust the numbers. <laughs> well, look, okay. The, the whole number thing is all about competition. You know, who, who else would be out there? I. I just, you're delusional. No, oh, I think you're naive, you're maybe. Not, yeah, you're delusional. <laughs> <laughs> now that is a I, one. You know what? I'm, I'm not going to judge. I, I'm not. You it know, looks like a fat Bilbo Baggins. It does. He looks like a hobbit. Um, I will totally give that to you. That's Samwise Gamgee's dad. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Um, <laughs> we got to take the ring to Mordor. <laughs> All right, well, you know, maybe he's a very nice guy. Maybe he treats her well, and yeah. she had an abusive father and sees him as, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's the, the daddy thing. The truth I, shall be revealed. Okay, <laughs> reveal Hi, me. <laughs> okay, I'd like to point kicks. this. Spurge! Th those are, that's a pair of Kobe's yep. right there. Spurge is the master of kicks. He'd be offended right now. If he those, saw those, those are Kobe's, 100%. Oh, man. By the time this airs, I'll be 54. You look very pretty. You look very adorable. Thank you. There's 28 years difference between the two of us. And, you know, the funny thing is, this is the first relationship of my life uh, with a massive say. age discrepancy. The last time I dated someone 26 is probably when I was 28. The couple might not be considered a natural fit, but that hasn't held their romance back. When I first met Mason, I thought he was the most adorable person on the planet. I like older men because they're more mature. I just love the way they look. Like, I actually like gray hair and bald guys. <laughs> well, sweetheart, <laughs> gray hair and bald, I can probably help you out yeah. in the apartment, yeah. right? And I'm thinking about this. I'm like, if this is genuine, <laughs> and we haven't gotten to the catch yet, but if this is genuine, then... By God, do what you do. Right. I mean, more power to you. You're a lucky man. Yep. Kiss her feet. Give her all the money in the world. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I just that's what I'm attracted to. Something Mason tells and I me. First there could communicated be a catch. through Facebook. I thought he. Oh, I hate that dog already. Yeah. He was really intelligent. I'm not gonna put myself down. I think I'm a nice guy. I think I'm a fun guy to be with. I think I have a lot to offer. Must but the truth of the matter is, section. I don't see myself as... You probably got a deviated septum yeah. or something from being a hobbit. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Got to. It's being in her league. So when she expressed interest in actually being in a relationship with me, I think I was as shocked as anybody. 
I think the relationship progressed so quickly because we just hit it off right away. When you first meet somebody and you end up talking effortlessly, no uncomfortable moments of real silence, that's kind of unusual. And I think that she felt that way as well. He said I love you about a week into the relationship. <laughs> a week? A week. God, you know, God bless him. <laughs> I, I can relate to him on a couple levels. God bless him. Good for him. Good for her. Oh, my God, Adam. You are nowhere close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't sell yourself short, yeah. man. She said it back very quickly. There was no real pause. Uh, she just said, I love you, too. Back in the 70s and the 80s, I was a really famous child actor. But then the, the career with most young actors, you know, kind of fizzled out for a while. Uh, I owned bars and restaurants for 20 years here in New York City, retired from that a couple of years ago, and have kind of been living the life of leisure really ever since. I do adult modeling. <laughs> oh, here's the kid. Here we go. <laughs> so she, uh, okay. <laughs> now ready? we figured it out. <laughs> I'm cam modeling. She's cam, a cam girl. Cam girl, okay. <laughs> Gotcha. I wonder how they met. <laughs> High donor at the cam thing. No, it was on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. What are you up to tonight? It's not just like a sexual thing. I like to act. Yeah. I like totally have relationships. With yeah. She wants, she wants to be an actor. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Listen to let, let her finish the sentence. I actually talk to people. I like to get to know people, ask them where they're from, and we just start talking about whatever. You got rid of the cam? Oh my god. Yeah. She really enjoys it. And there are times when, you know, I'll watch her do something and I'll cringe a little bit, you know, because the whole camming thing was something I was never personally into. Oh, I bull. Not buying it, are yeah. you? BS. Yeah. <laughs> BS. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he was camming big time. Yeah, big time. Yeah, he probably. Here, my conspiracy theory is he funneled enough money her way that yeah. she's like, hey, I can cash in. Yep. Tell us. No, I don't really understand why men feel compelled to do this. Usually when, when Sarah's counting, I'll just be watching television, quite honestly. <laughs> I know that it's a show. The real Sarah is not the one that's doing all the outrageous, outlandish, uh, you know, fun things that she does. Have a good night. With Mason's background as a child star, it wasn't long before Sarah was judged for being with him for all the wrong reasons. I've gotten a few reactions when we're out. A lot of people have come out and, you know, like, really? You're with that dude? Like, why? You know, is it for the money? Okay, that really upsets me when people say that I'm with him for his money because I can date 20 guys who will give me an allowance, you know? So... I don't need to be with him for his money. No, that looks nice. That goes well with the dress, I think. <laughs> yeah. What thing? Final take here. You know what? Good for them. <laughs> really. Good for him. You know what? I'm not buying her crap at all, but he might as well just ride this train for well, his you don't know long where she, as he You can. don't know where she is mentally. You don't know what she's been through. You don't know why she falls in love with him because of, you know, uh, the, the whatever it is that he has. I, good for them. No, <laughs> I disagree. Are you jealous? Uh, well, no, I think Kelly's hotter than her, but <laughs> I got got a safe face here. <laughs> She's like an 11. <laughs> Kelly, you're an 11.1. Um, no, I, I don't think it's genuine at all. There's got to be. Is there? Are we done with the video? I don't. Or is there more? Um, yeah, it's just kind of goes. Kinda, okay. They go on and on about oh, this isn't about the money. Yeah. I think we've hit all the good parts. Uh, we don't know the facts, of course, like always. I, you know, my, my final verdict is good for them. Yeah, I if guess it, if it works for them, good for them. Yeah. And then I'm you know not, when I mean, he's old enough and passes away, she'll be young enough that she can date somebody else's age. That's right. I'm impressed more than anything. I'm not discouraged or um, I don't feel bad for him by any means. I'm just. Impressed, I guess. If you can pull that off and more power. There's hope for all of us. Yeah. 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 
All righty. Oh, well, boy. I think we cracked an hour roughly, so see you later, everybody. Oh, we're, oh, we're, we're signing off? Uh, Kyle yeah, said he I got to go. I got to so. bail at six. All right. So. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. for hanging in with podcast number probably in the neighborhood of 30. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, this has been Project Ion with Adam, Kyle, and Jimbo, and yeah. we will see you guys next Doodalooski. time. Doodalooski.